G'day guys, Tim here again. Just want to introduce you to a little bit of radio logic continuity, a little bit of professionalism, you might say. It's what makes a radio sound like a radio. It sounds slick and everything sounds just like it's meant to be. Now, when I look at this in a situation, I'm just using Wi-Fi radio at home. Uh, you guys might be streaming, might have a, might have a proper uh, radio station going using Radio Logic DJ. There's so many avenues. This is such a powerful tool. Uh, but what I tend to do is the first thing I look at for continuity is how the how the events or your songs and your sweepers, your station IDs actually interact with each other because that's where things can sound disjointed. And in real radio life, uh, there's a lot of time spent on these things and, and how that works. So what I would do, I've got a just a small little program queue here of a couple of sweepers. One's a station ID and just a couple of songs. So what I want to look at here is the wave file uh, for this particular or the waveform for this particular station ID so we can get an idea of one what it's like and where the best place is to kick off the next song straight after it so we just click on properties down here and we can see the waveform uh, it's obviously pretty hard for you guys to know what's in it so let's have a little listen and see if we can pick a good point Optimod says low gravity gets you high on life how low can you go so there's a pretty cool intro there. There's a sweep where you might normally end uh, end that particular one and it just sort of fades out normally. In this case, what I've done is recorded and mixed it so that it's actually got a nice little tag at the end as well just to mix things up a little bit. So what I would probably do is come to this point here, maybe even just a little bit earlier. Yeah, about there. That's where I want to kick the next song off. Okay, so it's going to have a little bit of a sweep at the end, and then there's that cool little bit of um, of dry or semi-dry uh, voiceover at the end. So what I want to do is let's let's should be sitting there at the default when you find your one. We want to come in and dial it into what do we got there? Four point four point four. And there it is. So Radio Logic DJ will remember this uh, every time that you play it. So we just what's all we need to do is just click that goes into there all right so what we can do is try this out and see if it works now obviously you don't want to do this in an on-air situation particularly here unless you've got it set for an off-air such as your monitor um, section and that's going to a different output so definitely don't do this while you're on air unless you've got it queued somewhere else so let's hit this auto button and see how we went Optimod says low gravity gets you high on life how low can you go? So there you go, you get the introduction of the song. The other thing, which is a really good tool to have, especially for live uh, DJs, is being able to actually have a look at, for example, this song here. Let's just go into the play history. Your Ever Beating Heart by Craig Faraway. Go into the properties. And what we want to look for also is the point where, in Radio Logic DJ, they call it the ramp. Okay, so this is the point where the the best part of the song, or the trickiest part, or the or where the vocals start, whatever you, that catchy bit that you go, I want to make sure everybody's listening from here. Anything else can be talked over up until that point. So what we can do, if you don't know the song too well, you just play it. So at the moment, there's still no, no singing. When there is, we want to hit that ramp button. Here it comes. There you go, a couple of cracks at that, just trying to anticipate when it was. So what we can do, that's saved in there now. So let's go back and put that one back into the program queue. So we just clicked on it, we'll go top. And that's back up there now. So we'll go back into our program queue. There's that song. And there's your ramp time. So you've got a visual countdown which is going to happen. And we'll do that, eh? OK, so you've got a visual countdown. And that's going to give you a DJ an idea of how long you can keep talking over the intro of that song if that's how your station format works and that he's got a uh, 
10 seconds to go. And then at any point, obviously, that's when the vocal's gonna come back in again. There you go, just like that. So that's just a couple of the cool things that you can do with uh, Radio Logic DJ. That ramp time is actually really important when you're using uh, timestamps or any kind of pre-recorded um, intros or outros that you've programmed into Radio Logic DJ. That's another video. And what we need to do is make sure that you've got a, a ramp time so that Radio Logic DJ can actually work out when to start and when to finish that little timestamp or whatever depending on the length of the intro and when it will start the song so it's a very very cool way of being able to make this whole thing sound very very together and very professional so the other idea also is we want to go through all of our sweepers so in this case i'll just pull up another one just to show you what we've done again just to get a bit of a grip of it so this one is myself let's play it to you you're riding the night with Optumad. So that one's completely dry. So realistically, we could actually start that one uh, at any point. Sometimes I like to leave a little bit of dryness at the beginning and then, then start the song. So let's just have a listen to that one again. With okay, what we can do is I'd, I'd start the song in that little gap there. So as we can see, there's two seconds towards the end. So that's our fade time. So let's set that to two, and we're good. Now why don't we do that while we're here, is we'll go into properties, and we'll look for the start of this one so we can get that one set up too, eh? There it is, right about there. Cool. So now you can see that in action. So let's hit the auto button and see what happens. You're riding the night with Optumad. There we go, and there's your counter. So there you go, just a couple of little tricks that you can utilize in Radio Logic DJ just to make your whole program sound a lot more professional. So obviously you want to go through your library and your sweepers and your station IDs. So if I did that and I want to go through all of those and set them up with the properties, you can do it from just about anywhere in Radio Logic DJ. You can pull these things up and, uh, and set the properties. This one here hasn't got one, oh yes it has, at 0.8 at the end. No, oh sorry, no, that's the cut. So we actually don't need a ramp on that one. So let's have a listen to this one. This is Kiwi music. Again, nice and dry. Let's kill it in there. 1.4. And that's when we'll get the... So you just go through all of your sweepers and just find that point. And you might find that when it's actually playing back over air, you think, actually, no, that doesn't sound quite as good there. I'd like it a little bit earlier or a little bit later. And that way you can get a really good idea of, of continuity. And every song is going to be different. Uh, I suggest that when you think of making sweepers even, or, uh, or when you're playing them or how they play, as to how they end, because you're going to have to try and match that in with the format of the song. So whether it's a rock song and sometimes you want a tight end or a, something so it's really ready to go and it's not trying to compete audio-wise with what's actually going on uh, in the song itself. So... There you go, Radio Logic DJ continuity. Hope that has helped you guys out and uh, catch me for another video pretty soon. If you like this stuff and it's helping you out, feel free to subscribe and that way we can keep in touch. If you've got any other ideas or any, any tricks that you want me to see if I can work out for you, just let me know. Cheers.